A thing of beauty is a joy forever. This is part two. Fitting the steam inlet and exhaust piping. And that's why the engine is in my workshop in the first place. It doesn't belong to me. It belongs to a customer. I've been waiting for these to arrive from Forest Classics. They are PM Research, quarter by 40 threads per inch, 90 degree elbows. In this close-up, as you can see, these are cast, and they really look the part when fitted into the piping of a miniature live steam engine, especially when used as part of the exhaust piping. I'm going to start off, though, by making the piping for the steam inlet, and I need to bend a piece of 5 30 seconds of an inch pipe. Here, I'm bending the pipe using my very small microcosm pipe bender but the bend radius is just a little bit too tight for this application. Instead, I use this slightly larger pipe bender, and by using this pipe bender, the radius of the pipe is just about right. One final bend, and yes, that's looking good. When I cut the pipe to length and tried it in place, I was well pleased with the result. A good tip when doing this sort of a job, when you've cut the pipe to length, clean off the end so it's not sharp, and that way you won't scratch the paintwork or the baseboard. The final bending is going to take place after I've silver soldered the part, because the copper will be effectively annealed and much softer and easier to bend. I've made a mark on the bottom part of the pipe using a felt tip pen, and now I'm going to cut it to length using the bandsaw. Once I silver soldered the pipe union onto the pipe, I'm trying a test fit on the valve. And here I'm rotating the engine to make sure that nothing catches the pipe. It's close, but not that close. Just about right, I think. I need to fit a steam union on the end of this pipe. And I will also need to fit a steam union on the lower part of the exhaust pipe too. I really don't want to take off this exhaust fitting because it's fairly impossible to do that without removing the cylinder cladding. Somehow, I need to securely fit the elbow in this position on the cylinder. And I came up with an idea. Why not make a simple brass adapter with an O-ring seal that pushes into the existing adapter on the steam engine, and then everything will be fine, and it can be easily removed should the need ever arise to remove the exhaust piping. To start with, I've drilled a 3 16 of an inch diameter hole down the centre of this piece of brass and I'm currently turning this piece of brass to fit into the exhaust outlet of the engine. I've measured the inside diameter of the exhaust outlet using my pair of calipers, and by frequently checking the size of the turned part, in no time at all the piece of brass becomes the correct diameter to fit into the exhaust pipe on the engine. It would be easy to do some calculations and use the vernier gauge on the hand wheel, but on this lathe I think it's metric, so I don't really use it. There's no right or wrong way. I tend to do most things in my life by feel. And as you can see, the part now fits perfectly into the adapter on the engine. At this stage, I need to shorten the part that I've just made so it fits flush against the original cylinder fitting. And then I will shorten the entire adapter so that the elbow points the pipe exactly between the engine and the back of the flywheel. I completed the machining and threaded the end of it a quarter by 40 threads per inch. And then, as usual, I had to re-thread the elbows. I always have to do this, and I don't really know why. I think the pitch is slightly wrong. I need to make it so my new adapter seals in the existing fitting, so I can either use some O-rings, or in this case, I decided to use a piece of silicone rubber tubing. I machined a groove in the fitting using a small parting tool, and here's the end result, which should be a very good seal in the original exhaust outlet on the engine. So why didn't I just make it a plain fitting? Well, call it artistic license. I needed the fitting to look something, to have a little bit of art about it. I think it looks okay fitted into the original exhaust pipe from the engine. Here I'm rotating the flywheel to make sure that the connecting rod doesn't collide with the fitting. All is well, so it's time to make the piping. And it's top tip time. Whenever you thread copper piping in a lathe, you always need to put something down the end of it. In this clip, I'm using the shank of a tap, and this is 5mm in diameter. And before I start, a bit of lubrication. Copper is a very soft metal and will tear easily, so lubrication is essential. I don't need to cut this thread very far down the pipe. I just need sufficient quarter by 40 thread to screw it into one of the elbows. After I threaded this end, I removed the tap, then put the shank of the tap in the other end of the pipe and threaded that. And in this clip, I'm screwing it all together. 
When I measured this piece of pipe, I allowed for the thread on the end, and it must screw all the way into the elbow. It doesn't look good if there's part of the thread showing. After silver soldering a modified steam union onto the end of both of the pipes, this is what it looks like. All I need to do now is make a mounting bracket to hold the two pipes in place. I'm going to make this mounting bracket out of a piece of flat brass. And here I'm just measuring the pipes so I can transfer these dimensions onto a piece of brass sheet. I'm going to remachine the hexagon part of the larger pipe fitting to the same thickness as the smaller one. It will look better. Don't forget there are no plans or drawings for this. I'm just making it up as I go along. And here's the finished bracket. It's held in place by one 5BA bolt. And that's it. The job is now complete and I will leave you with this beautiful engine running on compressed air. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.